this is an example of a bank and uh, this uh, is not about a cryptocurrency but this is uh, about a consortium uh, the definition of consortium is about uh, how the alliances and then a group of uh, similar companies work together to form a consortium and then then they help each other in a very efficient and productive way right uh, in this uh, New York customer example, what we are going to show a demo is uh, there are two banks, which is Dart Bank and the Metro Bank. And uh, now uh, every time when we go to a bank, uh, individual banks, we give our Know Your Customer details. Uh, but by the way of building a consortium like this, and by the way of establishing a blockchain kind of network, and uh, the customer can just go in uh, and uh, connect to one of the banks and uh, the subsequent banks can start to get the details from the uh, other bank. So let me start with a simple example. Let's say I go to Antiru and I'm coming to a, a bank, that bank, and uh, that bank allows me to go for registration. So that bank is initiating the customer registration. So let's say I'm going with uh, uh, Adam's registration, and uh, I'm not sure what the exact uh, data was, but uh, let me give you a much younger day <laughs> for your data work. And, uh, it's an Indian uh, number, other number, so uh, so treat this equivalent to an SSM number. So let me go for this. Now, what I have done is uh, a basic information about a customer as a uh, is uh, uh, is used by the bank that bank to initiate the registration now there is one registration number which we call the kyc number is got initiated now let me go as a customer uh, now since adam uh, Registered, assuming that you know you received this uh, login information from uh, email or something like that, and this customer ID which is got initiated in the initial registration is available, and uh, then Adam will start to upload the relevant information, like uh, one being the passport. And these informations, what we are talking about, depends on the regulatory needs of the central bank. So in India, a couple of these are actually required. So I'm going with that license information, the utility bill, and then uh, other. Uh, so other is like an it's a number. Uh, then we go and uh, uh, some of this information, these documents get us uh, successfully sent to dark bank the dark bank can now go for an approval process of this so it's adam and the kyc number is 1035 now the dark bank can view what the documents have been uh, uh, uploaded now uh, this document can also be Verify the using field agents where they could direct to their residence and then verify it. In India, there is this is a, one of the background check process where people for the first time when you are registering in a bank, they come to your home, verify your actual addresses and stuff, and then let's assume that is done, then we go for an approval. So this that bank approves and registers a customer with all the relevant information they want. Now, uh, as we discussed in the beginning, let us say the consortium is all about not one registration, but the other bank which is going to use the information. So let's say uh, uh, Adam is also looking for uh, uh, creating an account in uh, Metro Bank. And what Metro Bank needs to do is uh, uh, it need not go to initiate the registration process all together again, but rather it can go and uh, pull out the information because they already have the KYC number from the customer and it can request for this KYC number to the customer directly. Now, once the Metro Bank initiates this request, uh, 
it comes to the customer and the customer can either accept or reject this request from the Metro Bank. Let's say I, Adam, approves this. And going back to the Metro Bank, uh, now the bank would be able to see the entire details, including the social security number, the license number, and so on. Now, what we have done is uh, we have used uh, uh, the blockchain as a service of uh, IBM blockchain. And uh, this uh, blockchain actually uh, displays the information as one of the block into its system. And uh, let me quickly go into get into that to show how it is stored in the blockchain. So, uh, so what it means is, uh, while it is logging in, what it means is a similar such kind of consortiums uh, can be built. Uh, for example, it could be an ad industry or it could be uh, any of in the, any such industries uh, which are very vital in, in terms of bringing transparencies and in terms of bringing uh, efficiencies, uh, they can just do that. Now, this is an, uh, I'm not going to explain in detail about what the IBM blockchain is, uh, but to just show it is an entry which has been created for Adam uh, with this uh, social security number. Uh, what does it mean is since it is logged in, it, it has been registered into a blockchain, it becomes immutable. I cannot find another mechanism to delete this uh, from this blockchain. Now, that is how the whole process of know your customer is going to be very useful by means of uh, going with a blockchain technique. And that way it is going to be more transparent and efficient for for a lot of organization enterprises around the globe. I, I was just wondering, actually, was that Hyperledger fabric that uh, that you were using for IBM? Yes, yes, yes. It is a Hyperledger fabric. And uh, what I have used is a blockchain as a service, but eventually it could be, uh, it could be as a local implementation as well. So uh, at that axon, we have our own framework on how do we deploy it for uh, not having a blockchain as a service, but our own customized the blockchain that frameworks, we could use it and deploy it for the customer. Excellent. Yeah. So you, you can basically leverage the technology to connect multiple banks if you wanted to. And so, so multiple banks would have an infrastructure or if just one bank wanted to have their own blockchain, you could do that also. That's right. Absolutely right. Yes. Excellent. Excellent.